Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about older magic cards and their increase and in increase in value. And I'm going to separate two discussions. One is older magic cards on the reserve list. I will save that for another day. And the second is bulk older magic cards that do have reprints. A lot of the cards I'm going to show you in the top 10 have reprints. This one does not. But overall, it's not a incredibly powerful card. For There are better cards than this today. If your strategy was, I wanted to make lands. In fact, Awakening is probably a better strategy than this card. And yes, I do know it has some interesting combos, but there are upgraded versions of this card. And then you might ask, why is this card so much money, right? Uh, so treat all lands in play as both lands and 1-1 one, one creatures. You may not be tapped. They may not be tapped for mana for the first turn they come into play. So Living Plane is an okay card. It doesn't really see any competitive play, but it is extremely pricey. When you have a card over $150, you do have to take notice of what it is and why is it this price point. These cards have just collector's value. Any card in Legends, Arabian Nights, even we are seeing a shift in how people view Chronicles as well. Because you can always get a City of Brass from one of the core sets, uh, one of the later core sets, but people actually prefer the Chronicles version because it is older, when in previous years, Chronicles was much less. And cards like Sinbad, which, I mean, these are not the strongest cards you can be playing, but they do have collector's value, and there's a very limited amount of them compared compared to what is being printed today. Now, that's the big difference. It's a collector's item if there's not many of them and people want them. I've seen an increased demand in actual want in these single cards. As you can see, there was that point in time that it spiked up and now, and then it went down and now it's kind of going up again so Sinbad, which has reprints, that has, I believe has a Chronicle version that you can buy for a lot cheaper, is the price it is because of the collector's market. I've always believed that there are Magic players who don't really play Magic, but remember having Magic cards as a child, and they want this they want Sinbad, they want Living Plains, because that's the decks that we ran when we were children. No one expected Living Plains to be a $150 card ever. Like we, It just didn't happen. So City of Brass, Arabian Nights, $115. You, there's multiple reprints of this card, including one in Modern Masters, which is very good looking. But this one will always have the highest value. And as you can see, this is actually new. Since July 2015, the card has just been spike up, spike down, spike up, spike down. And this is true for many cards in Arabian Nights and Legends, single cards of cards that I would have considered a bulk. Uh, in 2015, I would consider a lot of the cards that have been going up in price that are now 4 to $5 cards, bulk. And they were bulk. They were $0.25, cents, $0.50, cents, and they have just increased like crazy, which is good. And which is, it's good if you have them. It's not good if you want them. But there is a bigger demand, and I've seen that in actually my friends. My friends have sold out their collections, but the part that they kept was this old stuff. They love the old stuff. I mean, who doesn't like the old stuff? Because at the uh, very end of the day, alpha or beta will always have value no matter what it is. If it's a land, that's actually more valuable than most of the <laughs> bulk and alpha and beta. Lands go for 5 or $6 right now. 
even Kismet, which has been reprinted to oblivion in the 4th and 5th edition, the white border editions, that's a $4 card now. I remember like trading them away for like, or selling them, or I actually gave them away to Patreon. There was a month where I gave boxes and boxes away of these vintage cards, and now each of these vintage cards is worth 3 to $4, which is quite incredible when you consider... When all things are considered, that wasn't the price point at the time, but it is today. And I had the opportunity to buy large collections of this, of older stuff, which I passed up because at the time I had some storage issues in Houston. You have to really understand Houston. Um, In 2015, I was living in an apartment. It was a really nice apartment, but... It was apartment nonetheless, so I kept most of my extra stuff, including magic cards, Pokemon cards, whatever, video games at a storage uh, unit. The storage unit was, it was like a U-Haul facility. I think it was U-Haul and because it, it allowed you to rent the U-Haul afterwards. Uh, it was $75 a month, and I was really trying to slowly get the stuff from storage to my apartment because $75 a month with tax uh, 75 without tax is like close to 80 85 worth, worth tax in texas tax being at 8.25 percent i believe so i was trying to get rid of some magic cards not buy more but in 2015 these cards will ex- were exceedingly cheap i mean you look at this card falling star and in 2015 and even 2016 even 2017 it looks like it's a $2 card. Well, no, hold on. It looks like it's a $5 card. But now it is a $14 card. And in fact, one time, it was even more. So this is the type of cards you can expect to find in bulk. Falling Star has never been a good card. As you can notice, it is a rare. But it's never been... It's a $5 rare from Legends. That tells you how bad it is, right? Or even the worst cards in Legends can be worth more money as rares. But you will find tons of these in the bulk. I have tons of these in bulk and I have to go through them because there was no way. I'm looking at these prices and this I can't understand it. Yes, I noticed this weird format that no one plays. But even considering the weird format, what has changed today? Now, what has happened in, since 2000, it looks like in this card, 2017, where these cards have just trended up as a whole? Like, occasionally you, you would see one or two of them, but now you see a ton of them. Like, Gravity, this is another card that you will find in bulk. Because if you're buying collections and the person didn't look at it, Let's say you bought a collection in 2016, an older collection. There's no way that th- th- this person has this card at $31. Because the price point at the time looks like it was like $5. But now it's $31. And not that much time has passed. So when you are looking for collections, this is the holy grail now. Like It used to be super easy to find these beta and alpha collections. Now, you would get Moss Monster, and you would have all these cards that are not good, but you could get the collection quite easily, and it's not like something that is particularly difficult to buy in bulk. Most people are just happy to get rid of their entire bulk, and it just so happens that some of their bulk will be this, maybe less than 5%. But even considering, let's say you buy a bulk collection for 500, and you get 2,000 of these cards minimal, you will find some good stuff at today's prices. But back then, it's just kind of crappy cards that you just put away. So as the... I don't want you to make the mistake I did. And the mistake was I gave these away for pretty much pennies on a dollar. I did not realize that they would be valuable. Like Brass Man, I have probably a few hundred copies of this card. Because this is what you get in bulk. People are not going to send you Library of Alexandra in bulk, but they were more than happy to send you this card in bulk. And Brassman is a $3.58 card. In Europe, it's about the same price, so it's not that much 
people want this card and it's surprising um it is absolutely surprising that i'm intrigued because i haven't seen where this happening where even the even cards that should not have value in my opinion are just increasing consistently with value and if you're lucky enough to have these older cards hold on to them and see where this goes um, i don't believe it's going to stop i believe these items are now considered collector's items and as collector's items uh, they have tremendous potential to hold value maybe they don't keep going up forever but they will hold value it's no longer the hyper cards like bizarre ba baghdad the vintage cards the legacy cards people want maybe they are the price range is just out of what people are willing to spend on magic cards in general which is totally un understandable but they can still buy these cards and i've seen these singles move and i've seen like people demand the one thing i i realized um ha that happened with these cards was I kept sending these out, sending them out, sending them out to um, Patreon as well as to my friends because like I just had, I just have a large collection of these cards, and at that time I didn't think they were worth very much, and maybe they were not worth very much at the time. And now I'm getting requests, and these requests are very interesting because they assume I don't know what the value of these cards are today. They're like, oh, can you just send me some of these bulk cards? Just send me a few thousand. And I was like, mm, why would why do you want this? Like, why would you want Ebony Horse? Right? Like, what are you gonna use it in? The power level was terrible. And then I go online and Eb Ebony Horse is a two dollar and eighty five cent card. It's like, oh, well, if you have a thousand of these cards, that's two thousand dollars. Let's say, let's be generous and say it's twenty eight hundred dollars. If you can buy list it for half. It's fourteen hundred. So I'm gonna send you a fourteen hundred dollars for free. No, that's not how it's gonna work. And that's how I, you know, then I was like, wait, why do people want Ebony Horse? Like, why do people want that punching dude whose name I already forgot? Although it's a slide I, uh, I just looked at. These prices are insane. I don't know. I do know that there is a much, much higher demand for them. Like there's just a huge demand for these cards. Arabian Nights, Legends, Alpha, Beta, Alpha, Beta especially. But I do want to focus, it's not just Alpha and Beta, most people know, hey, if you have a Alpha or Beta card, you should probably hold on to it because it might be valuable sometime. Uh, if you have a antiquities card if you have an arabian nights card if you have a legend card those are the sets that are valuable chronicles is interesting chronicles might be the next set i mean chronicles has been looked down upon for so long that it's hard for me to imagine that it's actually like a regular set because it's it's a set that almost destroyed magic right it's the set that gave us the reserve list it's the set that most people hate but nonetheless quite interesting what is happening with the chronicle prices for the first time in a very long time chronicle prices are going up as a whole i don't know like i don't know why these cards are already priced they are i would expect them to be way less as most of these are in my opinion completely unplayable in any format that's not casual these the answer has to be hey, these are now considered collector's items. And as collector's items, this is a price for them. And people are willing to pay $10 for a pyramid. Do you know how many pyramids I have? Like, even, okay, even if people are not willing to pay $10 for a pyramid, would they be willing to pay two for a card worth, quote unquote, worth $10? Yes, because there is a lot of value hunters, right? Would I be happy to sell one of these for two? Probably, I would be like, okay, cool. You know, I have a few dozen copies of this just lying around in bulk. And I did remove all the bulk, and now the bulk is in my home. The more valuable stuff is at my Chase bank account. Or not my bank account, my Chase um, deposit box. So that's it, guys. Bye, guys.